Hello everyone, my name's Leandro and welcome to one of my Lightwave tutorials. Okay, recently I've actually, you know, had a few discussions with some people and they were explaining to me that when they render out a video in Lightwave, they actually, you know, have it as a video with a certain codec. Personally, I always assumed, especially in professional TV these days, it is considered to be a default that when you do anything with uh, 3D animation, you render out as an image sequence which basically means you have several hundred pictures, which basically represents the frames per second uh, of your entire uh, 3D animation. There are several reasons why to do this. And, uh, it, you know, it came to my attention after some of them were, you know, complaining about um, rendering issues, light wave crashing rendering, and I thought, that's weird, what are they doing? Until they finally said, well, they were using this codec, and, uh, you know, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, and when they use it, sometimes they get black renders and stuff like that. And I thought, well, yeah, you know, you're going to have other issues with codecs. I mean, you know, let alone you're doing a massive project and you have to send someone else some files. Not only is it likely that he, he she doesn't have the codec or, you know, it's outdated version uh, or say you have to transfer the files via the Internet and you're the one rendering out the files because you're, you know, just say, for example, because of time, you're the one who's got a faster machine and has to do it. Well, if you actually send over a, a video file, especially if it's a high quality codec, then uh, chances are it's going to be a ginormous file and transferring is going to be a nightmare. Well, that's why basically these days um, you render out as an image sequence. Right. I know this is going to, you know, be a bit odd just explaining things at the start, but I have to make it clear why that is. What's the benefits? Why why would you do that? OK, so after a power loss, say you're at, I don't know, say you've got 200 frames like in this scene and you, your frame 150 uh, took you about five hours to render and suddenly there's a power loss. Oh, no. Um, you know, what's going to happen 99% of the time, the video is either not going to be, you know, rendered out as in, you know, you can't open it or the file has been corrupted. You know, basically everything's lost. And even if you, even if you do manage to save, you know, whatever was rendered to frame 150, um, you're only, you know, you, you would, this is only now me saying 150. How the hell would you know? You know, even just comparing it, it's going to be a nightmare and you might be one or two frames off because it's not always obvious, you know, what the last frame was. And so trying to render out the last few frames and see if it matches up, you know, you're always going to have some kind of problems there. And uh, I've, I've had it several times before that when I did it, somehow there was a timing error. So even if I combined it in a video editor, it was just it was just a nightmare and a hassle. So basically after power loss, you just go say, I'm just going to show you here how you would do it. Go into the render panel, render globals. And then, you know, in here you would say, See, I've already been playing around here. You know, you would then say, okay, so I know because the frames, um, you know, the image sequence rendering out each each JPEG, for example, or each tag or whatever, uh, gets a number assigned to the actual frame that it's at. So you would actually know at what frame it, you know, it last rendered. So let's say it went up to 149. So obviously the next frame you would have to render out would be 150. And then because the scene's got 200 frames, go to up to 200. So you only have to render out the last 50 frames. So it doesn't matter how many times the power is lost. You can always just continue where you, you know, where it left, where it was left off. And then, uh, the another benefit I have as well is, um, you can actually add or alter frames at the beginning or at the end or anywhere really in the entire, um, uh, animation project, um, you know, without having to re-render the entire file, especially if you have a deadline to meet, you know, and you can't, you don't have the time to render out another 24 hours, you know, just, just to correct a certain video. Well, with an image sequence, just render out those frames that have the, you know, the alterations, the corrections, and then, you know, therefore there's no need to uh, re-render a complete scene. Um, now, one of the other things that I like to sort of, you know, now, one of the other benefits is also that, you, that it's cross-platform. I mean, on, it doesn't matter if you're on a Macintosh, on Windows, or on Linux, or you know any other similar operating system. You know, chances are you're always going to be able to open up whatever you know image that was selected. And um, now I mentioned JPEG for a few times, but that was just to you know make it a bit more clear. What normally people do, especially I do, is render out a .tga format so that's the targa file format and 24 bit now basically that gives you lossless quality um you know it, it basically looks like it's been freshly rendered you know in you know the highest co uh, codec quality you could think of but it's keeping the files to you know a, a fairly usable size so basically you could 
you know, you could also put it in a zip file, but uh, that wouldn't always, uh, you know, help you there. But um, that way you can actually transfer the files via the internet really quickly. And uh, the other person, if need be, can then encode into whatever, you know, video codec uh, he, she needs. And these are just a few benefits to name a few. Um, but again, I just thought that I would show you how to do that. And now, so just to uh, save some time in this video, because it's already been going on quite a bit, um, I'm just going to render out this here, and then I'll show you how to assemble it, say, with uh, QuickTime. Okay, as you can see, uh, you know, it's finished rendering the frames. I've actually stopped at, um, was it 166, you know, because it's obvious what's going to happen. You don't, don't need to render out for this example. Basically, as you can see, you know, each frame has got, you know, a number assigned and uh, any program that can handle image sequences uh, will understand, you know, that that's the way to import them, the, the order to go. Now, what, what, you know, how would you go about uh, using this as an actual video? Because, you know, so far you can't really use this. Um, right, so let me start QuickTime and then see how we would go about doing that. Right, so in QuickTime you can already see open image sequence. Now we'll just show where the file number one is and we can open it up. Now it will just ask how many frames per second? Well this video was made for 30 frames per second. Now uh, depending on the version you have, sometimes it also asks you is it a target image sequence and obviously you can click on yes. And uh, some other programs like I think it was Photoshop and uh, a few other you know ex ex more expensive programs, they uh, ask you as well is it a target image sequence. So just click yes and uh, basically I've now got a QuickTime file which, uh, you know, basically assembled all my frames, and now I can play it. Right, and then again, this is where you would now, you know, export as you would into uh, any video file format that you want to. And uh, again, trans transferring some of these files, because you can go, oh, clearly you see the quality that this video has, <laughs> and it's not really a video yet. Now, so, so how big is this, you know, a single file? Well, it's only 1.5 megabyte. So you do that times 200, for example, and then you would know how big that entire scene is. Now, again, depending on the um, you know what's in your scene, uh, the, a, a zip can actually still compress the you know files even more. So if you have to send that over to someone, you know that's going to be really fast, and they can then use the high quality codec that they would normally use for their video editing software. So again, another reason you know for saving time, and another reason why you would use image sequences. Okay, I hope that that was helpful, and until next time, take care.